I've been reading Daigo's book lately, uh, The Will to Keep Winning. And so far, it's like a very good mix of self-help and just personal anecdotes. And it, it obviously hits a lot closer to home than most self-help books or self-improvement books because it has to do with fighting games. You know, it has to do with something that I can relate to, right? The last book that I read was Meditations, which is, uh, you know, one of the best books I've ever read <laughs> and one of the best things that I've ever read. Uh, read to like help myself but it, it comes from a perspective of like a ruler of a kingdom right a ruler of a nation i can't really relate to that as much as i can relate to daigo i've started to read these kind of books in short bursts just because there's a lot to take away they're books made to help you so it's not really a race to the end like it was in school like trying to finish a book as fast as possible and retain whatever you can these books are, are meant to help you so what i've done is like Sometimes I might read five pages, and if I find a paragraph that really resonates with me, I'll just stop for the day, and I'll think about what that paragraph said. Sometimes it's five pages, sometimes it's 10, 15, whatever. When I reach a point where I'm like, that really hit, and like I really understand what he meant by that, I'll just stop, and I'll pick it up the next day. And so far, there's like two very key takeaways, two moments where I really had to stop reading and think about what is written here, you know, and read it a couple times and understand it. And realize that there, there's things that I can do to, to fix the, my situation as it pertains to Street Fighter, right? They're, they're, uh, you're not alone, right? Like people who are much better than you have gone through this. And, and this is how they got through it. To give you some context on the part of life that, that Daigo's speaking about, this is after he had kind of withdrawn from fighting games and he started playing Mahjong. He played Mahjong professionally. And this is when he was learning that game. You know, he was shadowing... Um, like a mentor that he had found. And at this point, he had spent a lot of time learning the fundamentals from this person, shadowing their playstyle, uh, kind of emulating their playstyle. But he had realized that there's only so many footsteps to follow, and it was time for him to sort of branch out and experiment on his own and figure things out. So let me read you these two paragraphs. He says, Mastering the basic theory of the game will only take you to the limits of conventional strength. To give a racing example, you need to be bold, driving with enough speed that your tires graze the grass at the edge of the course, not play it safe within the lines. Follow your instincts. If you plateaued at just good, it's probably a confidence issue. You're afraid to trust your own judgment and are relying on theory to decide your moves. As a result, you can't produce strength to overwhelm your opponents. It takes courage to break out of your shell. Once you've uh, built upon the foundations, your wins will increase. I shared that first paragraph just as context, but it was really that that second paragraph where he says if you plateaued at just good, that really hit. That's the one that I really latched onto because uh, I just feel that way. I felt that way in many games that I've tried to get good at, sports that I've tried to get good at. I can get above average. You know, we I can pub stomp and Call of Duty all day, but when it came to playing competitively, I was garbage, and I couldn't find I couldn't find it within myself to dedicate what it took to actually get good because I was scared that my effort wouldn't be rewarded, and I just wasn't confident in myself to be able to, to teach myself all that stuff and to learn it and to lose and win and, and fail. I, I wasn't confident enough in myself to fail and to be able to get back up again. He goes on in this chapter to talk about playing like he did when he was younger and trusting his intuition and in turn uh, implementing things as he like thought of them or as people told him he, he would just do it in the game. That's something that I used to do when I first started. A lot of you used to do when you first started, even if you didn't realize it, because you had nothing to lose. You know, you're like a rookie rank. You got on the game, you're at zero points. There's nothing to lose if somebody over your shoulder tells you to punish a certain move with something. You just do it. And if you fail, you fail. What did you lose? Nothing. There was nothing to give up. But as you start to play more and more and you get these rank points and you get higher and higher, there is something to lose. And it, it feels like your ego. A part of you hurts when you lose to a certain type of player or a certain thing or a certain option a part of you now hurts because you're a little jaded and you and you understand what you lost to and it's harder to accept that because you've now invested you've invested your time and you still lose to this option and it's harder and harder to accept that until you fix it daigo then goes on to say reverting my game to the pure form of my youth has made me win even more i think a common misconception as we get better and we invest more and more time and we sink more and more time into these games is that we cannot learn from our past selves because our past self is inherently worse, right? We put in all this time to get better, not to get worse. But there are things that you can look back on, replays you can look back on, and stuff that you used to do that you don't do now that you should have kept doing. And it's okay that you're working backwards a little bit. Sometimes it happens, but it's about recognizing it and then re-implementing it or like changing 
the way that you think about the game to maybe mirror something that you used to feel. He talks a lot more about playing on intuition, but now he's playing on intuition that is backed up by like reasoning and logic and knowledge that he's gained from the game. So it's almost like um, an enhanced level of instinct. You know, there there is a reason why you're doing a certain thing. You just have to trust yourself to do it. He then closes out the section with the second key thing that made me put down the book and really think. Let me read it to you. He says, attaining knowledge, honing skills, and accruing experience will all make you a more complete player. However, if you let a short-sighted focus on outcomes distort your mindset and dictate the game, you won't dazzle the public. What I'm after now is what really moves people, the pure game fueled by instinct. The part that you really latch onto there is a short-sighted focus on outcomes, right? You can attain all the knowledge, you can learn every bit of frame data and lab every single situation, but if you treat the game as a means to an end, uh, just to get points or to get wins or to get some placement in a bracket, you won't get any better. You won't get more wins. And even if you do, you won't be fulfilled by them. You'll just be chasing the next win. A focus on outcomes are what holds you back. I talked a few videos ago about how I'd overcome my plateau by just not getting as angry at every single interaction, not responding emotionally to every single interaction in the game when it didn't go in my favor. And I think what I meant is this. I think this is a much more eloquent way of saying what I meant is that if you focus on the outcome of every situation or of every game, it's not uh, conducive to you getting better, right? I, I think I used the example of an Oro player that I ran into in ranked who woke up crouch fierce, all right? Do you understand? <laughs> you just you probably don't understand how insane that is if you don't play uh, three Fighter or something, but it's an insane option, right? He woke up crouch fierce, and in that moment, usually I would just get completely angry. Usually I would get uh, like unreasonably angry, and I'd have to get off the game um, but that day, something was just different. Like, I didn't care that he did that, and I just played the game like normal, and things were fine. Life went on, and I was all right. And I feel like it's just because if you get hit by something like that, right, by just an insane option, your first thought sometimes is, this is how I'm going to lose. Like, I'm going to lose to this guy, and that's how I'm going to lose. And it just clouds your mind. Like, you can't think about the game anymore. You're so focused on whether you're going to win or lose this game now. And the other part of the paragraph that uh, really ate away at me is is when he's talking about like attaining knowledge and honing skills and accruing experience will make you a better player. Inherently, it will make you a better player, but if you become clouded by outcome, by just whatever happens at the end, not everything in between, you, it doesn't matter, right? Like all of this effort will be wasted if you can't stop focusing on, on the outcome. But that's all I got for you today from... Uh, the will to keep winning. I'm sure I'll make another video on this in the future. Uh, it just has a lot of really good stuff. And I know some people can't get it because it, it was like sold out on Amazon for a pretty long time. And then my mom randomly texted me and said, one of your, <laughs> one of the things that you put on your wish list is on sale. And I opened it up and it was like 15 bucks. So I ended up getting it and I'm very glad that I did. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you again very soon.